Hi everybody, Dave Blocks, I'm with you and I'm certainly glad you're with me here in the workshop once again. And we have uh, something very exciting and very different to do on Mike's dad's Gibson Master Tone Banjo Neck. Something I certainly don't do every day and uh, you probably don't see every day either. But uh, we've done a lot of work on this neck so far and because of that work we have to do the next thing. And I'll explain that so far we have in uh, the previous videos stripped the finish off the neck. We have uh, repaired the divots in the fretboard and leveled the fretboard. And in the last video, we fixed the uh, binding, the holes in the binding from the installation of the sliding fifth string capo that was on this banjo and is not going back on. So with all that work behind us of leveling the fretboard uh, is always a risky proposition. If you do too much sanding on the fretboard, you can actually sand out the uh, inlays completely but uh, we didn't have that problem but the engraving on this master tone inlay block didn't stand a chance i mean the engraving is so thin it's just microns deep in the uh, mother of pearl and just a little bit of sanding and it's gone so uh, today we're going to replace this inlay block with a brand new one right after this <laughs> All right, well, this is a multifaceted project and there are a lot of different things to be concerned about. Here's a view of the old inlay block. Uh, it was slightly overexposed, I have to admit, and this is too, but uh, you can see, you can actually read this and the other, um, although there was a trace of the uh, engraving left, it <laughs> was not legible. Uh, this little tool here you may have seen before. This is what's called a nut and saddle sander for guitar work. But I'm going to use it here uh, in a very similar way you would with a saddle. A thin piece like this, uh, just set it in there and you can sand it and keep it perfectly square. So the object is to be very careful with it. There are no uh, kind of marks on it to tell you where you are. You just have to uh, use your own methods to make sure it's square. The two little screws at the top are for doing that exactly. Uh, here's my sanding block, which I put sandpaper on at the beginning of this project, and it's still going, so uh, we're using that. I like utilizing my tools in as many ways as I can, so instead of having a granite lapping block, uh, which really is a little overkill just for this, uh, the sanding block sands the fretboard anyway, so I just use that to uh, sand the inlay as well, and it works out fine. Now the key to this is to go slow and take measurements often. Uh, this is how I trim the end of the inlay. I'm not going to actually trim it here, but you can see how I do it uh, in this little miter box I got from the Rockler store. So that works well. This little slice there, and you flip it around and do the other end. Um, but, uh, you know, you just have to be really careful and go slowly. And I will actually be sanding the end of the inlay, uh, which you can control better than the... The, the saw you can't take off tiny tiny amounts you uh, use the sander at the uh, end anyway but here I'm going to uh, actually trim it down a little bit and I just have to keep my eye on that and then what I what I do too is use a feeler gauge because your fingers are very sensitive you can feel one or two thousandths of an inch with uh, with your fingers anyway. So uh, one way to do it is just feel how deep it is at one end versus the other. But uh, I'm just doing it visually here and then I will check it with my feeler gauge which isn't really quite as thick as what I have sticking out there. But I can feel the difference and compare it and see what feels a little higher. The feeler gauge helps me do that. It reduces the uh, difference so being satisfied with that setting i'm going to go ahead here and uh, sand a little bit off of this inlay to get it down uh, to the size i want
Now, you can get these tools at many different places. I've seen dozens of them on eBay. Uh, I have purchased from Elmer Guitar before, and I was happy with their tools so far. So that's where I got this. Uh, Stuart McDonald doesn't sell one at this time. I think they used to, but um, even at that, this tool was about $80. But uh, it does such a good job. It's pretty indispensable when you're doing fine detail work. So now we're going to do a test cut, and uh, this is my little router base, again an Elmer guitar bargain, and it works fantastic, so completely happy with that. It allows you to control the depth of your cut. Now it's not a depth or a plunge type router base, but uh, don't really need one. I think opening this bit package was one of the hardest things about this project, and as I get older, those plastic containers, they get thicker and stronger every year so we'll just set the base in there or set the bit into the uh, collet uh, about where I'm guessing it will probably work and then I will set it into the uh, router base and make adjustments from there so we'll tighten up that collet make sure that the uh, the bit is in there tight and now I'm comparing the depth to see if it looks like it's about right with the uh, inlay itself the mother of pearl so I'm just tightening up all the nuts and thumb screws and everything on it so nothing slips this is the piece of wood I'm going to do my test inlay in now it's a lot of work to go to but I have to answer the question how deep to set my router I don't want to cut too shallow I don't want to cut too deep I want to do it once and I want to do it right so I'm going to pretty great lengths here to make sure that when I get to the fretboard with my router that it's correct even at that I do end up making some adjustment in this project but it's all perfectly fine so uh, to make your own double stick tape virtually uh, just laid a piece of frog tape down on the wood put some super glue on it sprayed the uh, activator on the other piece and put them together and very quickly it hardens up now the reason I'm doing this is to make sure that it doesn't slide around on my workpiece and I'm using this uh, fine edged chisel which uh, it's nice to have a chisel instead of a knife because the uh, edge is right along the side it's not in the middle it's only got one angle it's a single angle chisel so uh, I just cut all the way around that and, and now I really want to make sure that I can see that line so I know where to route to. With my old eyes I can't see that line very well so I'm going to uh, back it up with a pencil line and route to the inside of the pencil line if I can't see anything else. But uh, you'll see here after I do this uh, I'm going to change my method a little bit on that. So very, very careful here not to break the mother of pearl. And we'll just peel that tape off. And I will be all set to router out that well-marked area there for uh, the router work. So again, I'm doing this all just to set my router depth. Um, really doing this inlay a number of times until that router is just right. And it just doesn't matter to me, really. I mean, I'd like it not to take many times, but I will take as many times to do a test cut to make sure it's right before I go to the instrument and commit it to the router bit. You can't really put the wood back, so... Uh, well, that's not always true, but... <laughs> Now I don't route to the to the lines. I leave some wood and I use hand chisels to uh, cut the rest out. A couple of reasons I use hand chisels. Um, I can control it better than the router. I can get a nice perfectly straight line, especially with the the wider router, the wider chisel I'm using here. That's a three quarter inch for the long sides, and then my little carving chisel to uh, make sure I get all the way down to the bottom and take that wood out. Now what's really critical is to make sure you have a nice flat bottom to your route channel 
and square sides where the uh, sides meet the bottom of the channel you want an absolutely clean right angle there so the inlay lays down to the bottom without interference so I do take quite a bit of time just clearing that router channel to make sure that those factors are all correct and then you do a real gentle test fit to see if it is wide enough I identified a spot where I need to take a little bit more off and that's very typical so now I have got the uh, router channel all done I did inlay it in there and it sits a little low in there so I'm gonna make an adjustment on my router base and uh, do another one so this is where I say I do it a little differently the second time I'm just gonna hold it down with my fingers and draw the line and route to the inside of the pencil line now this isn't on the instrument so I'm not too afraid about you know goofing it up if I if that slipped on me or I cut it a little too wide I really don't care it's a scrap piece of wood but uh, there we go so we're gonna do this all again with the new setting on the router base I've got it set a little bit shallower so that uh, inlay ought to sit just about right this time let's hope and once again I go through all the motions with the chisels and uh, cleaning it out so that's a rough cut right there this uh, Claro wood is pretty fuzzy and uh, a little fuzzier than rosewood so I know it's going to be a little harder to work with this wood actually but I'm not actually routering out a big channel on the rosewood that's already done what I need to do on the instrument is take the uh, mother of pearl out so this is just a brief look I've edited most of this out but uh, I'm just showing you you know if you're doing this kind of work what it what it may entail so once again the wide chisel on the longer sides it helps keep your lines straight so I trimmed it up and all but uh, got it in there So I could see that it needed some more adjustment and uh, I'm going to do my little secondary trim and lay it into the wood. There it is and it seems pretty nice to me now so I know I'm confident that the router is set correctly. That's all that was about was just getting that set right. So in this case now I'm actually uh, routering out the inlay on the banjo neck and all I'm really trying to router is the mother of pearl not the wood although my cut is a little deeper than the thickness of this piece so it goes into the wood underneath it slightly but I'm leaving mother of pearl all the way around the edges I do not want to touch the rosewood along the sides or the ends I just want to uh, chip that piece of uh, inlay out of there that uh, piece of mother of pearl and I don't know how hard it will be to get that little rim of mother of pearl out of there it could be cemented in there super hard you never know but once again we'll just hit it with the uh, chisels very gently and uh, you can see I took the rubber mat off of the uh, workbench because it's too bouncy when I'm using the chisels I should have done that to begin with it just would have been easier so a little moisture on the paper towel to wipe away the dust and we can see th uh, really better what we're doing now the frets come up uh, pretty much uh, onto the mother of pearl or very close to them so I'm not too worried about the wood at the top and bottom but I will repair that but I'm very happy to see that that uh, mother of pearl just pops right out of there now interestingly the bottom of the channel seems to have some of that hard calcium like uh, mother of pearl along the bottom so I do have to kind of scrape out the bottom in addition to that since I didn't go clear to the edge with the router bit uh, I've got a little ledge of wood I'm working on right there and so I'm just trying to chisel that ledge out of there so that I've got a clean vertical side to my slot and I do that all the way around everywhere that little rim of mother of pearl was sitting I need to cut the wood away a little bit of it down near the bottom
So I may end up a little low since I've got some of these chips of uh, mother of pearl kind of laying in the bottom, but that's fine. I'm not worried about being a little low. It's really kind of counterintuitive if you're working on a uh, if you're working on a new inlay. It's nice to leave them a little bit proud, and you can sand them down flush to the fretboard. But in this case, I can't because this inlay is engraved, and sanding it is exactly what got us into this this problem so I do not want to sand that piece of mother of pearl at all so a little bit deep is okay if I can shim it up with some glue that'll be just fine and uh, that's exactly what we'll be doing here in a little bit so I was measuring the uh, mother of pearl and I wanted to mention that to, in order to make sure it's centered I, I actually did have to widen the slot a little bit in the fretboard uh, to make sure it's completely centered uh, I don't measure from the edges in, for like from the outside of the binding to the edge of the the, the uh, inlay route. Uh, all I do is measure the center of the neck or the fretboard and the center of my inlay, and I line those two little marks up, and I know everything's centered. Doing just a little bit of trim work here with the sander. I was talking about using the miter box to saw the mother of pearl and that will get us roughly close to where we want to be. I just do the final details with the sanding block. And there's our route. Uh, it's clean, it's uh, got no mother of pearl, but here I'm just chipping out those little gritty pieces of uh, mother of pearl that uh, we're laying in there. So that's how we end up a little bit, a little teeny bit low. Now, if you look at this carefully, you'll see that there is a, a fret slot there at the bottom of that uh, route and uh, I will talk about that a little bit more when I am um, I'm pointing at it right now I'm just making sure that I have vertical sides and a very flat bottom and that 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 piece of mother of pearl will sit flat in there just the way I want it So there we go. We're going to try and fit it in there and see how she looks. Get it in there. It looks like a good fit. Now it's a little easier to see now that we have some gaps. Right along the top edge there, the uh, strip of wood is gone. Uh, there was about a 50 thousandths thick piece of wood between the router slot and the fret slot. And you can see that it still exists there along the bottom. And uh, so I'm looking here now at the router slot and because that's a large gap at the top because that's two slots that's the router slot and where the wood used to be so we're going to restore the wood even though the fret pretty much covers it we're going to restore the wood there and uh, and maintain the fret slot so that's kind of a trick but uh, I can't emphasize how much uh, time I spend just cleaning and making sure that everything is fiber free and uh, square all the way to the bottom. You've got to be slow and meticulous and take your time. Now I've got it in there and the lighting's a little better too. And you can see I've got a fret slot at the bottom but I have no fret slot at the top. It's just an open channel and that's because that wood is missing. So here I'm raising it up a little bit with some uh, super glue and uh, that comes out a little bit lumpy so I will need to uh, kind of plane that off with my chisel just to make sure it's uh, the right height for that. Now I'm not gonna use super glue to glue the inlay in I'll talk about that in a minute. What I have to really be careful here is not bust out the the, the end of that uh, route there where the binding is. I don't want to do that. That would be really, really bad. So here I'm going to uh, set the neck at an angle. That is with the bottom end of the neck down at an angle because I'm going to add some glue in here and I don't want the glue to uh, go up into my upper fret slot. That upper fret slot I want to keep clear and clean and uh, my glue of choice for this uh, believe it or not is this canopy glue and I'll give you three guesses where I heard about that stuff I think if you watch uh, repair videos you know who I'm talking about but uh, good tips 
you know, I just like whoever I get tips from is fantastic. So a little canopy glue in here. I like it for three reasons. It has a high viscosity, so it doesn't just flow around uncontrolled. It pretty well stays where you want it if you don't put too much in there. Secondly, it dries clear. I may have more than three reasons. It dries clear so you won't see it, but I don't think I'll, it will be exposed anyway. Here I'm scraping it out of my upper fret slot. So it's, uh, yeah, I'm just really, really kind of um, especially attentive to that fret slot. I want to keep it absolutely dry. And uh, even at that, you end up with uh, having to clean it out a little bit. So I'm spreading the glue around, and I was telling you the reasons why I, I like the canopy glue. It doesn't set too fast. I don't want a glue that sets super fast because I want to be able to move it around. So what we call open time with the, uh, with the glue is, is great to have some open time with it. If you mess it up, you can pull it out and then uh, clean it up and start over or whatever. But it's just a precaution. So no super glue. I don't want to do that. The uh, third thing I was thinking about is that it does, since it has kind of high viscosity, it takes up some space. It actually fills gaps a little bit. And uh, so I just want to make sure that everything is really kind of leveled off. And that glue will do a good job. So now I've got it spread around, and this is the moment of truth. I'm going to finally inlay my new Master Tone block into the fretboard. And it is absolutely right up against the bottom of the original wood. That slot is completely intact. Well, 99% intact all the way across the bottom. And you can see I've got a fret slot just about 50 thousandths below that strip of wood. And uh, that's all maintained. Now the upper slot is obviously now extra wide because that's not only a fret slot, but that's where the wood used to be. So we'll fix that next. But uh, right now it's the next day that glue has set overnight. And uh, here I'm going to uh, point out the uh, little gaps that I'm going to have to fill the next stage of this project. We are right up against the wood. Now there's a little spot there I'm pointing at right now that is chipped out. So we will take care of that. Now all the way across the top, the wood is chipped out and we need to maintain the fret slot. So that may sound like a very difficult thing to deal with, but really you do it pretty much the way you do everything else. Just take it as it comes. Doing a test fit with a fret to see how it looks. And uh, I'm going to drop that in the slot, which is the name of a good Tower of Power album from years ago. So there's something else we'll be dropping in the slot when we repair that. And that'll be coming up here just a little bit. Now we can't even see the slot when the fret is in, but I'm going to fill it with, uh, with wood and glue anyway. To make, to make sure things are as uh, good as they possibly can be and to add stability to that fret. Now I know 18 thousandths is the width of my fret slots and that's what I've got here is an 18 thousandths uh, feeler gauge. Of course, that's super wide there, but uh, that's what we need to maintain for our fret is an 18 thousandths of an inch gap. So how to do that? I couldn't find a piece of material that I could uh, dispose of. I tried pieces of plastic from packaging. I tried um, uh, different blades like a razor blade or a uh, box cutter blade. Nothing was 18 thousandths of an inch. So I'm going to sacrifice my Harbor Freight feeler gauge to this. there to take the burr off the metal anytime you cut metal with a grinding stone you get a terrible sharp burr on the other side so I flattened that out now I'm adding some wax to the piece and I'm going to add wax to the fretboard and anything I don't want glue to stick to most importantly the piece but here my inlay 
uh, itself and the wood surrounding this area because I'm going to be packing this glue and uh, sawdust into that slot uh, and I don't want it to stick to certain things. I'm actually going to also tape off the um, inlay so uh, double protection there but uh, I know hey it's not going to stick to the wax but uh, I'll wrap it down the sides and that'll help hold it in place and then just go for it. So here we go. Uh, next step, we're going to drop that little shim in the slot and uh, tape off our inlay. If I can get it to stay in there. I was uh, concerned for a little bit about uh, how to hold it against the top of the fretboard slot. But then I got to thinking and I realized that if I'm packing uh, sawdust into that the bottom portion of the slot, it's just going to push the spacer up against the uh, upper side of the slot so I really have nothing to worry about it will take care of itself so again it's not going to stick to the wax but uh, you know I'll just do the best I can press it down there real nice and then go for it we're going to put that stuff in there to create a new wood ledge in there so we'll have two sides to that fret slot going to use the uh, tight bond um, hide glue along with my sawdust that I recovered from my routing. And I chose the hide glue for a couple of reasons. It's very sticky and viscous and it will stay where you put it. It uh, is the right color. That's what I really like about it. It's got good open time. So everything about it uh, was suitable to this. That's why I chose it. Uh, I actually spend quite a bit of time packing it in here. So I did not want a fast setting glue. So I'm using this card, you don't see much of that, but I spent a good deal of time working it down in there and you just want to be sure that the uh, material is down in the slot and packed in well. So now we have uh, skipped to the next day and uh, it's dry. So we're going to pull our shim spacer out. Uh, but of course our work is fairly new and uh, the glue may not be completely hard in one day. So I'm going to uh, take my multi-purpose uh, steel plate there hold it down hard against my new work so it cannot come out and then just go ahead and force the shim out which is waxed anyway so it shouldn't be too difficult but there we are nothing came out um, we will see a little chip but I'll take care of that very pleased with how this uh, turned out it almost looks like no work was ever done to it and that's what I like. That's what I want to. That's what I want to get. Now we're not quite done with it either, but uh, so far so good. Really happy with it. The uh, inlay is nice and flat, and uh, our ledge is recovered. Now, as much trouble as I took to keep glue out of that fret slot, the saw is getting hung up right there in the middle. If you notice, so I do stop and uh, take some time to clear that. You can see it gets hung up every single time I go by it right there again so uh, yeah I won't waste all your time showing how I do that there's a little spot right here on the lower side that needs to be filled so we're gonna take care of that right now no uh, crazy special efforts to do that it's just one tiny little spot and uh, I've got my guard in there now for the fret slot so it's protected and just gonna pack it in there nicely and let that dry and then come back and take a take a final look and it looks just fine to me now there is just a little bit of a very tiny narrow gap at the end of the inlay and uh, that's being taken care of now by packing in the finest dust I could get and packing it in there with the glue and uh, very simple wipe it off and then uh, and then we're uh, we're good to go so I'm just inspecting the final work and uh, it looks very good from my vantage point. I've got the tape over it so I can protect my inlay. That's what I'm here to do is to replace and protect. So that inlay is uh, going to be untouched when I'm all done. We're just shaving off the top of any little bits of uh, wood or glue that may be sticking up and we will uh, sand it off. And that's going to be about it. Um, I am going to lay in a couple of frets while this glue is somewhat malleable. That's uh, 
somewhat soft or not quite completely hard I'd like to get that uh, these frets in there I'm not going to do all the frets I'm just doing a, the two frets here by the inlay so I can get them to set while this thing completely cures up uh, you really have to tap in the frets at the bottom I can't use any kind of clamp or special tool to put those frets in because it's got the heel there and the heel is uh, very large so just tapping these in there uh, and then we will take a quick look at our final work and we are all done I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did